the core of a police cell, society has acted to protect itself. It has found each man guilty, and in retribution for their crimes, the community is sending them to prison. Van for the bay, first one takes. And three takes. Next. The community has the view that uh, prisons are hotel-like structures where prisoners have it very easy, where they can watch television, write letters to whoever they want to, see whoever they want to. Now, the reality is that prisons are very brutal places where uh, sexual assault is rife, where violence is a way of life, where to, to psychologically survive a number of years of imprisonment, you just have to become pretty insular, pretty tough, uh, lose any sense of sensitivity or humanity. Prisons are really very, very unpleasant places and the only people who say they're not are people who've got nothing to do with them and don't know anything about them. More than 30,000 Australians a year go to jail now and although for 8 out of 10 of them it'll only last a year or less, all will make the... I remember stepping down from the truck and going in between the gates of the prison, the front and back gate of, of the wall where you go into these prisons and, uh, and that's where I was just waiting for all, whatever was going to happen to happen. Going in the bay at 15, fair dinkum. Uh, what a terrible, it reminded me of a, a big spooky castle because I got there and, and came in that night and it was grey clouds and all that I could see is the, the place that reminded me like something uh, out of a horror movie. Jeez, I shit myself. Prison at 17. Uh, the first time I walked through the door, through the gates, I should say, uh, uh, the overwhelming thing was the smell, and it scared me. What's your name? Do that again. Right. Hold on. Right. Just open your mouth. Tongue up. Right. Arms up. Right over. I was 17 when I first came to an adult prison. When I stepped off the van, I was terrified. Um, I was expecting to see huge brick walls, um, but it was all wire fences, razor wire at the top. The first place I hit was uh, Bogger Road. I was scared. I didn't know where to look, where to turn. I just sat in the corner most of the day and shook.
they learn what is meant by maximum security. For at this stage, the system doesn't sort out the violence from the petties, the novices from the veterans. Later, they'll be classified and some of them move to more gentle regimes. Tomorrow for some, or next week, or maybe not for months. But for the time being, they're all in together and they can't pick their neighbours. the top bed and uh, the bloke said to me, he said, listen, get down and give this a rub. You know what I mean? So I got down and, and belted the can out of him with a, with a shit tub. I was never a good looking bloke. I don't know why you want me to have. <laughs> Prison life is a culture shock. It's a life that you live very, very cautiously and it takes quite some time to adapt to it. It's a total shock to oneself. Mentally, and physically. Well, when I first arrived in prison, um, I was totally depressed then. You know, for me it was a shock. And within a couple of months, I got worse and worse. I went downhill. I was in a cell on my own. And, you know, gradually I started to entertain the idea of suicide because there were guys around me in cells, you know, only 20, 30 feet away that had committed suicide while I was there. Um, you know, and I seriously considered it, like I thought how I'd make the rope and how I'd tie it to the bars and stand on the stool and all that kind of thing, you know, and got to the point of writing a note to leave behind and I snapped out of it, you know, I guess I realised I had nobody to send the note to. <laughs> There are people who I believe should be in prison and receive longer jail sentences than they do now. There are murderers who commit crimes who often get out of prison and uh, rapists and other people like that who it really worries me personally that they are for a variety of reasons able to get out of prison very easily. I believe very strongly that people who commit violent crimes should spend a substantial period of time in prison. No argument about that at all. But the reality is that uh, something like 80 to 85 percent of people in prison are not there for violent crimes. They're there because they can't pay fines, because of property offences, uh, drunk, for a whole variety of very minor reasons which are of no threat to the community at all. The people out there in the community should never think they can't end up in here. Given the right set of circumstances, um, the right set of feelings and emotions, physically and mentally, they could easily end up in here. I have never been associated with anybody who's been in jail before in my normal everyday life before I came here. Um, and it, that just wasn't me. But here I am. I'm in jail. It was just a thing that happened. It was a one-off thing. And they shouldn't think that they can't end up here because they can. To house, feed and guard one prisoner for one year costs the community $30,000. Most people believe the prison are into crime. The national crime statistics tell another story. And some believe that it is a time of rehabilitation of the criminal, to show him how to mend his ways. But prison is not a cure for crime. It never has been, and now the experts are admitting it. Anyone who's gone around the prisons, looked in the workshops, gone through the wings, spoken with the prisoners, would say, my God, it's a, a hothouse for producing deterioration in human standards. Why would I be so stupid as to be talking about rehabilitation? Well, I don't think that the prison system uh, helps people uh, at all. 
and uh, I think what the, realistically what you have to try and do is, is at least send them out no worse than what they came in but I think in many cases many of them are going out worse than what they in fact came in The physical conditions of these old institutions do little to help transform a criminal into a better human being. We built our prisons sturdily and well for the conditions and populations of the 19th century. Problem is that now, almost at the end of the 20th century, most Australian jails are still pretty much as they were built. Some of them, in such major cities as Brisbane and Adelaide, have no sewerage in the cells. In two division, you've got no toilets in your cell. You, you take a tin in about twice as big as a Milo tin into your cell, and that's what you use for a toilet. Now, picture if you can, try and have a shit in a tin with a diameter of about seven inches. It's pretty hard, right? But no choice, that's it. you just got to try and squat on that tin, and, you know, when you've got to go, you've got to go. So you use the tin. After you've had your shit, you've got nowhere to wash your hands. First thing I was taught as a kid was always use soap after you have a shit so you don't get disease. You can't do that here. You've got nowhere to wash your hands. Not a hope of using any soap. And then the shit tin's got to sit in your cell all night stinking. If something goes wrong with the meat in the kitchen or, or something and all of a sudden people have got a bad attack of the runs, you're in a lot of trouble with a shit tin in your cell. I'm in London, Todd's up, they're doing it much. I think that the community generally want uh, prisons, they want the prisons to be secure, uh, they want people uh, who are dangerous of course locked up, but uh, they don't really understand what the conditions are like in prison and I believe that if you took uh, the average person through most of the prisons in this country uh, and explain to them the toughness of the regime in terms of being locked in small cells for very many hours every day that they would be surprised and public opinion might ameliorate. But generally prisoners, uh, criminals, do not attract sympathy in terms of their treatment in prison and I think uh, that some people have the idea by reference to some jails which are quite comfortable that all jails are comfortable and that some jails are more like a holiday farm or a motel uh, when the reality is that the majority of our jails are pretty dreadful. <laughs>